Hi there, this is the next installment of my series on budget multimeters with more than 2000 count displays, duvals and currents and are reasonably safe and not smart because for sensitive electronics smart still has some issues. Last time I looked at the Crenova MS8233D which was not a bad choice. Let's see if today's candidate, the more Pilot 17B can beat it. The first impression is that the box is significantly larger. We have an instruction. And quite a mess of cables, of which two are standard probes and the rest are a whole bunch of test cables with alligator clips. And a K-type temperature probe and the meter itself. No holster or carrying case. This large meter and especially its screen is really quite the opposite of the tiny Crenova. You can buy this meter from many places. I got mine from eBay for less than 17 pounds, about 21.5 dollars. As with the Crenova, watch out, there are different models. For example, there's one with NCV instead of temperature. I prefer temperature as I prefer using a slim voltage stick for NCV instead of a bulky meter and this meter definitely is a large model. Feature wise, the Mo Pilot is very well equipped. It has millivolts, max min, rel, hertz or duty cycle and manual and auto range. The only thing I miss is a bar graph. Everything is quite clearly labeled and this meter is very easy to operate. As with many meters, hold serves two functions, short presses do the hold while the long presses turn the backlight on or off. The backlight stops automatically after a rather ridiculous short 15 seconds, barely long enough to do a measurement and then read the value. Accuracy of multimeters is usually in the form of a percentage and a digit value, like here where the error is plus minus 0.5% plus minus 3 digits. As explained for the Grenova, the reason for the large increase in error on the left on DC volts and all the other ranges is that the smaller the measurement value, the larger the error caused by the digits part of the accuracy spec. If there's only a single digit left on the display, the fact that this can be three digits higher or lower than the true value makes a huge difference in error, while the same digit error on a large number in the display makes very little difference. With that out of the way, I standardize on showing in the upper graph the complete measurement I did, while the lower one is the same graph but scaled to the specific error range limit of plus minus 0.5% in this case. The Mo Pilot easily meets its specs. It's really quite accurate down to 2 millivolts thanks to its dedicated millivolt range. After some nasty surprises with smart meters in the past, I routinely check the input resistance of meters. The Mo Pilot has the usual 10 to 11 megohm in DC volts and AC volts, but for millivolts I got a surprise. The trusty Priman reads infinity and only switching to nano Siemens did produce a value. About 0.04 nano Siemens or 25 giga ohm. The Moore Pilot 17B millivolt range has a true high impedance resistance in the gig ohm range, but there is not a word of this in the manual. I expect such a feature only on relatively high end bench multimeters like here on my Agilent 3441A where I can set the input resistance in the low voltage ranges to greater than 10 giga ohm. Why is this important? Most digital multimeters have an input resistance of about 10 meg ohm, but there are cases where this is too low and can cause errors. This is often the case with circuits that are designed to use as little power as possible and therefore use pretty high resistances. For example, if you are trying to measure a voltage of 500 millivolts through a source resistance of 10 meg with a multimeter that has about 10 meg input resistance, you read only about 250 millivolts. If your meter has a high Z mode, as super high input resistance is often called, you will read 500 millivolts. I tested a couple of my meters and all my bench meters, yes, I know, far too many, have this capability, except for two which are relatively low end as far as bench meters are concerned. None of my two fairly high end handhelds have this capability, but I was surprised to find three other handhelds apart from the Moore Pilot 17B that have this capability, 
amazingly including the tiny pocket meter PM3. Only Martindale and Sunwa show this fact at least in the specs, but it's not mentioned otherwise, so it's easy to overlook. The high Z capability of the more pilot DC millivolts is certainly a welcome bonus. Ok, moving on to AC volts, which is always a bit worse than DC volts because of the additional error caused by the AC to DC conversion. Of course, given the extra millivolt range, the MoPilot 17B handles low AC volts quite a bit better compared to the Canova with its 6 volts lowest range. Ultimately, the limit here is the RMS conversion, so 10 to 20 millivolts at a stretch are basically the practical limit, but overall, it's an impressive performance. I always test how a meter behaves when both AC and DC are present because not many meters pass this rather tough test. I'm using a square wave of about 19 volts peak to peak at 50 Hz with 50% duty cycle as shown on the meter on the right. True RMS meters will show this as AC with a voltage that should be VPP and the MO pilot handles that of course. When I increase the duty cycle, the AC part becomes less and the DC part increases. Switching to DC, the MO pilot shows the correct value with no issues. It works fine even when the AC and DC parts fall in different ranges, which is when most multimeters, like for example the Crenova, fail and have to resort to manual ranging. But it's not all gold. A second more realistic scenario is to measure ripple AC on top of a large DC. Here I have a setup, a case of 60 volts DC with about 3.8 volts RMS ripple on top. The Mo pilot has no problem showing the DC part but it has the same problem as the Crenova in that switching to AC shows zero instead of the ripple. In this case, even the more pilot needs manual ranging because as soon as you do that, it shows the correct ripple. It also follows the behavior of the Crenova in that if the DC voltage is more moderate, about 21 volts, the more pilot starts showing something, but it's nonsense as manual ranging confirms. This is a very common problem with lots of multimeters and if mixed AC and DC signals are present or suspected, you should always check using manual ranging. The bandwidth for AC is specified as 40Hz to 1kHz and yes, they mean it, boy does it drop after 2kHz. On the low frequency side, it did work with no noticeable drop down to 10Hz. DC amps now. Note that the x-axis here is in milliamps, not amps. Here the performance of the Mo pilot is very similar to the Crenova. Basically down to 20 microamps it meets or exceeds its specification. I measured the resistance of the different ranges and the values and corresponding burden voltages are in this table. They are pretty standard for most multimeters, nothing that stands out either positively or negatively. On AC amps, from 20 microamps onwards, the MO pilot has no problem in meeting its specs easily. Again, that's quite similar to the Grenova. For resistance, accuracy is good and it's dark contrast to the Grenova. The MO pilot has no problems with low resistances, in fact, it excels at that range. Here's an example how well the MO pilot handles single digit ohms and even 0.1 ohm values. It's pretty astonishing. On capacity measurements, the accuracy of the MOPILOT pilot is equal or better than the spec from 5 nanofarads onwards to 10 millifarads, which is the highest value I tested. It's rated to measure up to 99.9 .9 millifarads, which is impressive, but I have no caps in that range. As with all multimeters, measuring speed is slow for high values. But with 10 seconds here, it's noticeably faster than the Crenova, which took 15 seconds for the same measurement. For frequency, the MO pilot is rated to 20 MHz with 1 volt RMS. In my test, the MO pilot has no problem to measure up to 41 MHz with that input voltage, which is excellent. Instead of NCV, the MO pilot has a temperature measurement range. Common with other multimeters, the accuracy specs are of course just for the meter and exclude the error the sensor may produce. I tested the meter with a simulator and it was spot on all the way to 1000 degrees Celsius or 1832 degrees Fahrenheit. On negative values, there were some errors. These are amplified by rounding as the more pilot only shows full degrees. 
It is likely that the cold junction temperature of the simulator and the MOR pilot drifted slightly apart and so the minus 10 degrees Celsius value seen by the MOR pilot was really minus 10.5 rounded up to 11 which is a 10% error. Verifying temperature measurements without a climate control chamber is very tricky, so I am not too worried more astonished that the MOR pilot rated for a maximum negative 20 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees Fahrenheit happily marches on to minus 100, minus 150 and minus 200 degrees Celsius or minus 328 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have a KTAP sensor for that, the MOR pilot is ready. Getting back from the cold, in diet mode there is of course no problem measuring a single diet. Similar to the Crenova, the MOR pilot does not use the beeper in diode mode. Two diodes in series are also possible. A red LED with about 1.8 volts forward voltage works. Two red LEDs in series do not light and no voltage is displayed. But similar to the Crenova, the nearly 2.7 volts forward voltage of a white LED is still shown. The leads that come with the meter are larger than the Crenovas but still slightly shorter than standard size. They are rated for 10 amps 1000 volts CAT3. There are no markings on the cable. Continuity test with the leads that came with it. It's hit and miss both on the display and the beep. The beep is rather loud, I have to tone it down a bit for the video. Swapping the leads for branded ones, I'm using Pomona but others are available, show that the sluggishness of the beeps is gone. I keep repeating myself here but really pretty much any budget meter is improved by replacing the leads with good ones. The extra leads in the box are the usual kind with alligator clips on each side. You get 5 pairs with different colors. Interestingly, one of the white ones was equipped with a slightly different alligator clip on one side. I take that one to point out that the cable conductor is just folded under and then the cable is just barely held in place by bending the two edges inwards. You can't call this a crimp and the connection is rather uncertain. As a matter of course, I soldered all this cable properly in and I recommend doing the same otherwise you will have no joy with these test cables. The battery compartment is accessible by removing one screw into a metal threaded insert. The meter takes a 9V battery. To find out how much juice the Mo Pilot 17B takes from its 9V battery, I powered it through my bench power supply. The Anang meter on the left shows the current and the prime in the middle the voltage. At 9V the meter takes between 2 and 2.3mA. Turning the backlight on increases this to nearly 11mA. Many other meters, the beeper uses an enormous amount of current. The consumption shoots up to more than 34 milliamps when it sounds, and backlight plus beeper tops it at a massive 43 milliamps. I am reducing the supply voltage while the more pilot is measuring a voltage. This is to see when the low battery warning will come on and if the accuracy changes at low battery. The low bat indicator shows when the voltage drops past 6.5 volts with no loss of accuracy before that. This really utilizes the 9 volt battery and moreover makes it suitable for rechargeable ones which usually have a nominal voltage of around 8 or even 7.2 volts. When the low bat symbol shows, you do not have to be in too much of a hurry to replace it because as the voltage drops further, the meter does not show a loss in accuracy. I can drop to 3.4 volts just fine and only then there is a small change in the measured value. Amazingly, the meter keeps going until 2.5 volts before it finally turns off. The meter has an automatic power off function which is on by default. You get a warning at 14 minutes and at 15 minutes the meter shuts down into a sleep mode using about 8 microamps of current from the battery. You can disable APO by holding select when turning the meter on. It will still beep annoyingly every 15 minutes. As with the Crenova, opening the meter is not easy because of the tight holster that has to be peeled off. Once the thing is off, there are four soft tapper screws to be removed. And the bottom shell of the housing can be lifted off. First impressions, lots of space and only a handful of components. Immediate eye catchers are the fuses. These are proper sized high rupture fuses like you expect in a Fluke or Primen. A 10 amp 
Busman branded fuse from a proper distributor costs about half what I paid for the whole meter. Okay, Zhang Rong isn't a name I'm familiar with and it isn't rated for 1000 volts, only for 380, but that's more than the 250 the manual advertises. 100 kiloamp braking capability seems a lot. The Busman fuses I used have only 10 kiloamps. Zheng Rong is a proper manufacturer and has a website in Chinese. Their fuses are available on AliExpress and eBay, but I was unable to find a datasheet. On the scale, the Zheng Rong reads 6.46 grams. A Busman 10 amp fuses reads 6.6 grams. And another Busman 6.3.4. Nicely bracketing the Seng Rong, so it seems genuine enough. Like on the Cremona, we have the three current shunt resistors, the usual thick wire type for 10 amps, the 0.99 ohms for milliamps and the 99 ohms for the microamps. There is the usual clamping networks of large diodes. Interestingly, instead of splitting the 10 megohm input resistors into two 5 megohm ones, like what the Cremona did, more pilot decided to have a series of four 2.5 megohm resistors instead, for even better voltage rating. And yes, like in the Cremona, just one lonely PTC. Sadly, the brain is a blob, so it's not possible to find any data sheets. The PCB is dated 2019, so not the freshest, and the label VC17B890 seems to point to a Zotec 17B meter, which indeed is very similar to the Mo Pilot 17B. Next to the label we have an HT7133 voltage regulator, which reduces the 9 volt battery voltage to 3.3 volts which kind of explains why the meter can survive the severe battery voltage drop we saw earlier. To wrap this review up, when the meter is on the tilting bale on a wooden surface like my bench, it tends to slide when operated. Not as much as the Crenova in the last video, but still. Otherwise no complaints and the large display makes it easy to read from quite a distance. There are not many shortcomings on the Mopilot 17B. A bar graph would have been nice, especially on such a large display. AC plus DC is better than many multimeters but still not completely resolved. My usual advice remains for the MoPilot 17B if you suspect a mixed signal always use manual ranging. The meter is rather power hungry, especially with backlight and beep. And speaking of the backlight, 15 seconds is really too short to be useful. On the plus side, it has a really large display which makes it very easy to read even from a distance. The specs are ok and it really excels at low ohms measurements. Safety and fuses are better than expected. The CAT4 600V rating is probably justified, but with just one PTC, protection of the meter's electronics is not great. Although I rather have AA or AAA batteries, the 9V battery for the more pilot can at least be rechargeable and the meter can make full use of its capacity. Lastly, the high Z millivolt range, which is a useful feature to have and quite unexpected in a meter of this price class. I like the more pilot 17B, it's a good budget meter with more features than the Grenova. If physical size is not an issue, I would actually recommend the more Pilot 17B over the Grenova. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. There are many more projects, repairs and reviews coming up and it would be great if you decided supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon. Thanks for watching.